Hey guys, you're probably wondering. Why is Peter wearing a bicycle helmet? Stick around, you'll find out. Help! The loop show's been taken over by a blanket fort! Help! Uh, hang on! Run for the loop! Ah! I'm Jamie. And I'm Ricky. Join us, won't you? Welcome to Blanket Fort Knox. Knox we Knox, have every Knox. amenity you could possibly need, except for a bathroom. That guy's coming next Tuesday. We can hold it till then. But we have two screens to watch two different things at the same time and listen to the radio. It's uh, confusing as it is entertaining. All right, over here we have our sports arena. Uh, we're training for the uh, Aqua Olympics, and so you know we have to get all of our scuba gear together along with all of our sports equipment. And then we've got a little band studio. We're gonna start a band. Uh, we first need to learn how to play these instruments, but there's not a guitar trumpet band out there, and we're going to corner the market. Last but certainly not least, the Loop Lounge. <sighs> I just really, Love it here. I feel like we should have been like having the show here. <gasps> I agree. The entire time. Yes, it has everything that we need. We've got our snacks, we've mm. got our drinks, we've got our tunes and our two TVs and Clavi here. Man. It's perfect. We know exactly what to expect. Nothing but corner to corner comfort. Yes. <sighs> Nobody can bother us. We set uh, our own limits. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. It is. I think I'm gonna take a nap. Um, life skills with Chaz. <clears throat> That's a good mm. idea. Part of growing up requires learning how to maturely and confidently communicate with people. It's easy to read, write, and respond to a text. It might take some thought, but you can have as much time to think as you want. Making a phone call though, that might take a little bit more courage, especially if you're not used to it or if the person you're talking to isn't a close friend or family member. So here are a few tips that'll help you out with making a phone call. One, ask if or when they're available. Most people have cell phones, so if you have their number already, just text them to find out when they can talk. Hello, I would like to speak to you on a phone call this evening. Please reply so that we may coordinate a proper time in our respective schedules. You don't need to be all formal about it, but you never know when people might be busy, so it doesn't hurt to ask. Hey, can you talk on the phone tonight? Two, find a quiet place. It's pretty annoying to try to have a conversation with a noisy background, so it's a it's a good idea to, it's a good idea to try to find a quiet spot where you can talk. Oh, hold on one second, please. Hey, I'm about to hop on the phone. Can you please be quiet for a minute? Three, say hi and bye. When you get on and get off the phone, it's always a good idea to greet the person with Hello. Hey, yo, what's poppin'? Not like that. Not unless you know the person really well. But you can never go wrong with asking them how they're doing when you get on the phone or saying have a good day or have a good night when you get off. Four, sometimes conversations are uncomfortable. You might feel nervous, say something weird, have an awkward pause. And that's okay. It happens to everybody. It happens to me. And it's nothing to be worried about or feel ashamed of. Five, if they don't pick up, you can send them a text or please leave a message after the tone. If it isn't an emergency, just sending one text is okay. They'll get back to you when they can. I hope this helps, but if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask a parent or adult. Talk to you later. Can making a phone call be scary? Ask again later. See, that's the best part about this whole fort. No phones! No phones allowed. I yes. love it. Is this all we're doing today? Absolutely. Oh, actually, no, we have a friend coming over. You invited somebody in here? Ricky! Yeah. Come on! It's our fort! Yeah, I mean, I, I took a lot of courage to make a phone call. True. Speaking of courage, let's take a look at this next segment. I also ordered a pizza. <gasps> a pizza with pepperoni? Oh, yeah. Yes! And then I told them to put pineapples on it and then take it off, throw that pizza away, and then make us a fresh pizza. Oh! <laughs> okay! <laughs> you had to pay for two pizzas, sorry. <laughs> hey, Loop, it's Leslie. Have you ever had to do something scary, like giving a presentation or like finding a seat in the cafeteria? 
maybe even uh, playing a sport at school. Well, for me, that scary thing is singing and playing guitar in front of other people. And it's kind of ridiculous because I've been doing it for years now. I mean, I probably have done it at least a thousand times. I'm not even kidding. I was in this band, this band, this collective, this band, my own band, leading worship at church, leading worship at a camp, singing at weddings, and I even made a music video for Switch. I'm holding on. Like for years of my life, that's all I did. And you would think that by now, I wouldn't be afraid of it. But no, every single time. I have to do this. Is there any way I cannot have to do this? I can't believe I said yes to this. <laughs> like I've been dealing with fear my whole life and it's the worst. Take for instance, the last time that I had to get on stage and sing and play in front of people. Guitar. For me, fear shows up as hiding in the bathroom. Hi, I'm totally hiding in the bathroom before we go on stage. Over prepping my notes, pacing around the space before the event begins, returning to the bathroom. This is what I do before I go on stage to try to get myself psyched up. Um, to, I don't know, freak out, give myself another pep talk. I think, it's, I think it's gonna go well. There's definitely parts that I'm a little bit nervous about. Take a long walk, try to find some peace, start to pray, and then this moment, which is the worst, oh, and then it's game time. and you just do it. Don't chicken out. You say, you know what? Here we are, and I'm doing this. And yes, my hands are shaking, and my heart is racing, and I am terrified, but I'm gonna do this. And listen, Luke, that is courage. It's not about not being scared. It's about doing it even though you're scared. So yeah, I've been dealing with fear my whole life, but that also means that I've been dealing with courage my whole life too. To my scared friends, listen, it's us, the scared ones, that have the most opportunity to work out our courage. Have a good week. So while you guys were away, Sarah joined us in the fort. Hey, Yay! Sarah, welcome. Hey, hey cookies. Oh, yeah, thank help you. yourself to whatever you like. Cookies, chips, foliage, Thanks blankets. for having me on the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've been talking about courage. And so do you guys think that it's time that we go outside of the fort and do something courageous or? Or, you know, just be comfortable forever until the end of time, just nestled in comfort. <sighs> Well, I have a way for us to be courageous and stay in the fort. Ooh. Oh! I hear you guys like mm -hmm. challenges. Yes. So I brought some popcorn for us to try. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh! Okay, so the challenge is probably who can eat the most popcorn. Okay, I'm gonna win this one. All right, let's do it. Uh, actually, no, there's a twist to this one. Of course, this is the loop show. There's always a twist. All right, we have to eat the most popcorn uh, blindfolded. Uh, no, I actually brought three different flavored popcorns for you guys to try. Ooh. They're interesting flavors. Well, while we go pop some popcorn, why don't you guys check out Sarah's YouTube channel, Sarah Explains It All. Hey guys, welcome to Sarah Explains It All. I'm gonna be sharing with you some survival tips. If you've seen my other videos, you're aware of the fact that I only have one hand. I am missing my right hand and forearm. You all know how I feel about the word disability. I don't have a disability, I'm not handicapped. It's literally just a part of me. Or not a part of me. <laughs> Good one, Sarah. What this is gonna teach you is how to survive one-handed in a two-handed world. I think this really applies to anybody. Anybody who has any kind of insecurity at all. Anybody who ever has felt abnormal. Tip number one. Okay, are you listening? You are weird. Accept it. There is nothing you can do about it. You're a big weirdo. I bet you like wear socks to bed or I bet you brush your teeth like four times a day. Who has time for that? I mean, really, are you a monster? I mean, I think about being in Target because I'm in Target most days. I cannot tell you how many times parents have, their kid has pointed at me and pointed at my arm and the parent has been so mortified and they pull their kid away, they rush him away as fast as they can. That makes me feel worse. Why not just let him ask me? If you haven't been around somebody with some kind of a difference, then how would you know that it's okay to just ask 
them. If someone only has one hand, they know that they only have one hand. So it is okay for you to say, hey, you have one hand. Explain to my kid why. If you were supposed to have two hands, you would have two hands. If you were supposed to be tall, you would be tall. If you were supposed to be to have hair, you would have hair. But you weren't, and that's just how you were made. We're all just so concerned with what we are not instead of what we are. And we just waste so much of our lives worrying about it rather than be upset about it or spend any more time worrying about it and wanting to be different embrace it because it's not going to change no matter what you do everybody has to change and everybody needs to work on themselves and i just don't think that you can do any of that until you have that foundation of self-acceptance i was made the way that i was and i was made that way on purpose and i believe that you were made that way too so accept it so that's it those are my survival tips on how to survive one-handed in a two-handed world. If you're a weirdo, comment. Okay, thanks, love you guys, bye. Well, the three flavors that we're gonna try today are ketchup, French toast, oh, and pickle. It, okay, the of ketchup course. grosses me out, French toast, okay, and pickle, I don't mind. Ricky, do you mind? <laughs> you don't like I pickles? think we all know. <laughs> um, how do I say this kindly? Pickles are awful. Um, <laughs> They are of the devil. I don't feel like you should generalize pickles that they're all the devil. I'm sure that there are some nice pickles. Let's give it a go. Let's okay, try. so small bowl first. Ketchup? Yeah, let's. All right. Yeah, this is the one that I'm grossed out by for sure. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Hmm. Well. Ugh. That's weird. It's very weird. Yeah. I kind of like it. You do? Really? Oh my gosh. It does taste like ketchup. Mm hmm. That doesn't, that doesn't taste natural, but, no. <laughs> but I still like it. <laughs> French toast? French toast. Now this I am excited about trying because I love French toast. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Mm hmm That's really good. That is good. I like it. Yeah. That's the end of the challenge, guys. Thanks, Sarah, for being here. <laughs> nice and, try, um, Ricky. Mm. I'm very sorry. I actually really like pickles. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. I expected it to be Ooh. saltier. <laughs> it's more of just that pickle flavor. I am uncomfortable. I'm so sorry. Not in our fort. You failed me, fort. Oh. Why did you let this popcorn in there? Maybe this will get the taste out of your mouth. There's actually a bonus round. <gasps> bonus. Got one more to try. Is it extra pickle? It's shrimp. <laughs> no. Are you serious? It's not pickle, I'll take it. It has quite the haunting aroma. Haunting oh, I aroma. smell that is shrimp. Goodness. Yep. Ready? Yeah. Let's go. Mm -mm. I'm still taking, mm -mm. tasting pickle. I'm gonna need some more. That is gross. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. <laughs> the shrimp? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad that you tried the pickle flavored popcorn, even though it wasn't your favorite. Thank you. It takes courage to do that. It takes courage to try new things. Everyday courage doesn't have to be some big extravagant thing. Sometimes it is as simple as trying something new or saying hi to somebody at school that you've never talked to before, or even just sharing your feelings and your ideas with your friends and the people around you. Yeah, you're so right. And I really did just want to thank you for um, being courageous and stepping out of your comfort zone and making your YouTube channel and just sharing uh, your story. And because I know that it's going to encourage other people. Uh, I know that it can be really hard to, to talk about our vulnerabilities. So thank you for being so courageous and doing that. Um, I know that like I, um, I seem, you know, really outgoing and, and that kind of stuff, but sometimes I, I get really nervous to talk to people and just thank you for encouraging people to be courageous. You showing your courage kind of gives other people permission to show their courage. Like, oh, well she can do that, I can do that. Mm -hmm. so thanks. Well, as my pastor says, we may impress people with our strengths, but we connect with them through our weaknesses. It's really, really true. So maybe we should step out of our comfort zone. Ah, no, not our comfortable <laughs> fort. So we gotta cancel the plumbing guy. Oh yeah, he was gonna be here on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Well, now we don't have to not go to the bathroom until <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> okay, fine, we'll go. We're gonna step out of our comfort yeah. zone. Here we go. Deuteronomy 31, six. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid 
and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Well, thanks for joining us today, Sarah. And thanks for helping us step out of our comfort zone. Today, you took baby steps into the unknown. And what about you? Are you ready to try something uncomfortable? Are you? Are you ready? Don't scare them, Ricky. <laughs> Remember, when you are courageous, God will never abandon you. Try something risky. Be limitless. Be strong and courageous. Sarah, do you want to help us sign off? I'd love to. Enjoy, Enjoy the ride! ride. So that whole lesson, all of it was about being uncomfortable. When was the last time that you were forced to be uncomfortable, and how and how'd you and how'd you feel about it, or are you even willing? Would you totally avoid a situation just to keep from being uncomfortable? I mean, we've probably all been in that situation where we're the only guy or only girl at an event, a birthday party, maybe in a classroom. Um, you know, how uncomfortable was that? was that for you? Perhaps you had to give a speech at school, you know, fifth, sixth grade, probably like a 30 second speech at most as if you're doing that now. You know, I can only imagine because I know what it did to me, just that willingness to get up in front and how uncomfortable I became and my nerves, I was just nervous about it. So, so what is a comfort zone? You know, a comfort zone are those are those safe places that we we can function in, you know, and just like those guys were in the in the movie or in their uh, what was it a fort that they built, you know, it's in your bedroom at home. Hopefully, your bedroom is your comfortable place, but you know, it's it's got things that you like, things that you enjoy doing, things that you like, you know, colors that make you happy, you know, pictures on the wall, whatever it might be. It's your it's your it's your perfect place, and the risk level when you're in those comfortable situations is what? Is the risk level high or is the risk level way low? Yeah, the risk level is way, way down here. You know, we're, we're not forced, we're not pushed to do things that we're not used to doing or in this case, comfortable with. You know, my wife and I, Teresa, we moved to Guatemala and man, probably before you, before all y'all were born, for sure, it was, we moved to Guatemala in 2003, and we lived there for a couple of years, and was talking about being uncomfortable. Um, so many places, uh, I would be, uh, this first time I ever experienced it, in a grocery store, and I'm the only white dude in the grocery store, and Teresa, you know, her, her mom's from El Salvador, her dad's from Puerto Rico, and and, we're, and she's like, well, how does it feel now, you know, Mr. Tall White Guy? And so that uncomfortableness could come, but but it's like, hey, I'm in this situation. I'm supposed to be here. I know these. I know what it's supposed to be like. So so I just made the most of it. And so often that's what we we don't do. We don't we we choose to avoid a situation, then possibly getting out of our comfort zone a little bit. Have you ever stepped outside of your comfort zone? What was it like? It was probably awkward at first. You know, maybe by doing that you made some new friends or, or by doing that you uh, learned something completely new about yourself that really, eh, yeah, it's not that awkward. I don't know. But, but, but the thing I want you to remember or realize is this, is courage is not the absence of fear, but it's doing what you're afraid of even when you're scared. You know, courage could be, <clears throat> it could be standing up for that person that's getting picked on. <clears throat> it could be possibly, man, joining the band when all your friends are joining the football team instead of doing the thing that everyone else wants you to do, doing what you really want to do. It can be intimidating and scary at first. Courage could be, courage could be talking to someone for the first time. We don't know what the relationship is could possibly be until we reach out and we say hello for that first time. You see, you can have courage every single day of your life. You, that's something that, that you, you know your boundaries. You can push your boundaries. You can pick up the phone and make a phone call. You know, Sometimes it's really awkward. What's he going to say? What's she going to say? What if they don't answer? You know, Whatever it might be. You see, they didn't really go deep into it, but in, in Joshua... 
the life of Joshua in the book of Deuteronomy, Joshua followed Moses all through after Moses left the people of Israel out of Egypt. Joshua was there with Moses, and he and he and and he was one of the spies that was sent into the land uh, to see if they could go there someday. And Joshua was going to be one that was going to take over after 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 Moses died, and he was scared. He was scared because he was going to be doing something that he had never done before. And we've all been in that situation of doing something we've never done before. And God reminds Joshua multiple, multiple times. I've got it underlined in my Bible as many times he says it. As he says in Joshua or in Deuteronomy 31, 6, specifically, it says this. It says, so be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God personally go ahead of you he will neither fail you nor will he abandon you you see we have that promise from god that he tells us not to be afraid to trust in him and especially or when when our actions are honoring to him or our efforts are honoring to him he's like man don't be afraid of this world i've overcome this world so this bicycle helmet why are you wearing it you know, I really don't know why I'm, I'm having a bad hair day. That's why I'm wearing it. But really, you know, what's a bicycle helmet out in public? It's really awkward. Well, you got the courage to go out. It's like, no, nah, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. But, but the courage when I get on my bike, you know, the first I didn't even wear a bicycle helmet when I was a kid. But as of late, you know, I ride this bike and I go really fast. It's like, hey, you can ride the bike and crash and crack your head open. Or you can wear this helmet, and when you crash, you probably won't crack your head open. But it's going to make me look like an idiot. It's going to make me look weird. It's going to be this. Like, which life do you want to live? The life in a wheelchair as a vegetable or a life as someone that has a good story about surviving a crash? Have the courage. Put on the bike helmet, Peter. Who cares what other people think? And it's so true about back in our lives. Who cares what people think? People are people. God is God. And he's got a plan for your life. And he's got a plan for my life. And he wants us to be willing to step out of our boundaries.